Hello, this is my second part about how to use self before reading the handbook. Let's get right into it. This is where we left off. Let's quick check my list. We want to talk about code blocks. We want to talk about how to use if and while and about lists and about how to use morph objects like the, the graphical stuff, which is very interesting. And we want to talk about the lobby, what it is and why I didn't talk about it until now. Let's minimize that again. And let's, sorry, and let's clean everything up. It's a better way of cleaning up middle mouse button button and clean up and now it looks at least it looks clean okay now we dismiss everything okay we want to start off again with an empty object so we just get our empty object we extend this one oh, we don't even need to extend it we just get our evaluator make it a little bit bigger and now we want to add a code block so just like code that you want to run um full stop if you ever did some self then you know what I'm talking about let's let's let me just write it this is a code block and we want to execute the code block this is the reason why we write value and this is the definition the definition of a parameter in this case so now if you have a parameter you write it in within these pipes if you if we're talking about a code block you write it within these pipes and then the parameter has a colon and it's unnamed kind of and this is the way how you write it now we add or we put in a 3 to the TTT and 4 gets added by 3 and now we get it and we have the 7 we can do this code block again I execute it again get it again this time we get a 6 let's make this a little bit I don't know easier to see now let's add a local variable kind of this way not kind of this way you have to add the full stop here the point I don't know how you actually call it and then this is the local variable and we can just assign a value let's say six don't forget the point also don't forget the point here and then we don't say four plus TTT we say local plus TTT now we get it and we have eight why because TTT was two 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 plus local is eight now you maybe realize that we don't have any return statement in this thing here um, I explained earlier that we have this as a return statement let's write this here let's say get it and we get the eight again but I don't know actually what's the logic behind this but in some cases it works some cases it doesn't um, the, the last value that is evaluated here gets returned automatically so this is like an implicit return and this is like an oh hell an explicit return and control Z doesn't work here so we have to retype our stuff and just to make sure we don't get upset later well let's add another let's add another local variable local 2 we call it local 2 we assign 4 and this time we don't care about the value in TTT we just return local plus local 2 don't forget the point and let's get it and we get the 10 let's do it and nothing changed because this is just like code that's without any output right of course if you don't intend to have any parameter on this one then you just remove the parameter it looks like this and then we can say get it and we get it again okay the reason why I told you about these blocks is because we now need them to make our while statement first we delete all that stuff now we have this pure evaluator here and in this evaluator if we want to have local variables we have to also put them inside the pipes first and now we can use it we said we, we define a new local variable counter we set it to one and then we say counter is less than 10 and this is the important thing you don't have any keyword here in self this is basically you can think of it as a function so this is a code block like I just told you with the code block and while this code block returns true we execute execute another code block which just says counter will be set to counter times two and this eventually run and we can do it and we see token expecting the end of the expression 
yes, it tells us in this time, it's not so confusing. It tells us I forgot the dot, let's do it. And of course, nothing happens. We do, I mean, things happen, things get calculated, but we don't see anything. We don't have any output. If we hit get it, we hit, we, we get nil because there's no return in any way. Now we add a very simple way of adding the implicit return statement, just to counter here, get it. And, and it says counter not found. Strange, strange. We actually defined it here. We set it to one. And now it's telling us, especially on this point here, that counter was not found. This is very strange. Again, a very misleading error message. The point is that we forgot the point at the end of the while block. And now if we get it, we get a 16. Because the, you need to see the counter is, right? This is the way how to write a while loop. And you can also say, if true, Okay, gave me a hard time again. This error message again, if true, wasn't found, it's kind of misleading again. I don't know why, but you have to remove these blocks and then everything is working fine, get it, and you get the expected two. If you expect now to have an else case, then you're a little bit wrong, sorry for that. Let's set this to 20 and let's run this one. And we get this, so how do you actually define an else case? That's if you set false and then you say get it and we get the 300. So the else case is indicated with false. Actually, it's a funny thing to just open another evaluator and just see if we can actually grab the counter from above, get it, and we don't get it. So we just figured out that the local variable counter is only known here in the top and not here in the bottom because it's local to this evaluator. So far, so good. Now we talk about lists. We add a new list like this. One element is one, one element is two. And I love the list itself. This is like the, the, the best thing that teachers could ever use to explain linked list to children or students or pupils or whatever. Let's get a list. So the list contains these elements. Let's check out how the list actually looks like. You have the list, you op you extend the content of the list and you see a rep, probably the representation. And let's see where it points. Let's make this a little bit more smaller. We need more space now. And let's see the representation of a link. And you see next and previous, we hit next and we get a link again. We hit previous and we get a link again. Like this and then let's open the representation here. Okay, it's getting far too much so let's remove this at once we see the one remember the one is the first element we see the one value one by the way the first one was no value now we click next check out what is next and we see value two and now we click next and we see that this is again no value and oh hell this is pretty annoying let's click previous and we see the previous is pointing to the one also, it's very, very hard to see. This, this, this one is not good. Let's remove this one again. And click, pre click previous on this one. You see it's pointing to the left one. Now let's click previous on this one. And we see it's the two. So this is really a graphical, the perfect, the, like when you see that, this is the perfect graphical implementation of a linked list. Show this, pre please show this to your students and they will understand the linked list like much better than if you write it on the blackboard or whatever. Now we are a little bit bored with only two elements. So we want to add another element and we say self, which is pointing to this object itself and say add 33 point do it. And we got a new or some new pointers pointing to different stuff. You see this like this link is broken. But we see that we have actually three elements. I was a little bit confused right now what happened. Um, but let's just check it out together. Let's remove uh, this one. We don't need the previous one. This is the 33. It's pointing there. Hmm. And I have actually no idea what just happened. We have three elements in size, but the representation looks a little bit different than I expected. Okay, sorry guys. I have no idea what's just happened. If you have any idea, let me know. I will write it in the... Video description, check out the video description. Maybe someone told me and now I know. Okay, but if you want to copy the list, we can just uh, copy, I think this should work. 
and we have a copy of our list this time with size one I have no idea what's happening please help me out I will update the video description okay that stuff being said let's go away from these very disturbing lists and make something graphical we want to talk about graphics we want to create our own graphic object and the graphics library let's call it library is or the basic object this is the basic object is a morph and this is the most important or the most interesting section for me because you can actually see stuff and then you say morph copy so you clone the basic morph object and then you have your morph object and you figure out well I want graphical stuff I want circles and squares and, and guys walking around and then you get this stuff or what is what's graphical here important thing very important thing is if you want to see the graph uh, the, the graphical stuff the morph you have to middle mouse click I made a right mouse click just and it was full wrong make a middle mouse click and in the bottom you have show morph now you can finally see the graphical stuff it's very important with that in mind, you can now skip over to chapter 7 inside the handbook and read all the stuff about morphs. Now you can follow all the stuff that's written in there. Okay, we're almost at the end. At the end, I want to talk about the lobby. When you watch any videos, any tutorials or the handbook, you always see the lobby. So the first thing that happens is people call the lobby here and say get it and tell you about the lobby. I think the lobby is not so important. The lobby is you can you can view the lobby as the basic framework of self all the functionality all the basic functionality is can be reached through the lobby and is implemented in some pointering way through the lobby and you remember we actually when we wanted this clonable stuff when we wanted to make our object clonable we called traits clonable and we got our object and we have traits clonable this is actually just the short form of writing it because the long form is lobby traits clonable and this will get give us the same object what's happening here is we go to lobby and we have the traits here which has a trait object and somewhere here this is just like grouping you have to figure it out I don't know where it is and somewhere here there is an object or a link to an, a pointer to a clonable object and this is what it just basically returns with this in mind, you can now skip over to the handbook and read all that important, very important stuff about the lobby. What can you do with the lobby? The thing that also some other tutorials contain is, for example, you make your new, very important object that's called a couch. You have a couch object and now you want to have couch copy. But it says, well, it, it doesn't know that. Okay, it's, it's not a lowercase letter. Okay, we try again. Doesn't know that. But wait, when I just hit morph and say copy, then this worked fine. So what's the difference? The difference is that morph is defined somewhere in the lobby. I have forgotten about it and I think it's not too important. But if you want to know about it, just watch this video from Chris Double. And he tells you how to actually implement or how to add this stuff. Can you? Oh, you, you can't actually see the title. Okay, here you go. It's a little bit smaller now. So just watch this video and after that you know how to make stuff like this work with the lobby. And at the end, for my own computer, I had a problem with this, with the size of the letters. Just This is just a note for you. Um, they were very small, much too small for my computer. And I always had to zoom in with Ubuntu. And I tried to fix the font size. And if you have the same problem, please don't try it. Um, I spent like two, three or four hours doing that and always the self uh, virtual machine kept crashing. There's no one fixed point to set the font size like globally because it was not needed until now. If you have time, feel free to implement it. I would be very, very impressed by that. Okay, all that being said, now you should be able to start reading the handbook and get more into details about maybe how to add objects to a list without like getting messed up and tell me after that. Um, I advise you to start reading with the chapter four now. Maybe the first chapters are a little bit like if you want to study it like in a research study, not for really using it. Also, when you read the handbook, you find out um, you will have this, you open your evaluator, type in some comments and in the handbook it's working, but for you it's not working. 
And you you wonder why? I, I just typed in here. The problem is that some stuff you have to type in the shell. So you see, this is the shell. This is just an, an, a strange object. Let's close this evaluator here. And some stuff, I don't know which stuff. I'm not too deep into self. Um, has been written. Ha has to be written inside the shell. And luckily here you can use copy and paste for that within the self framework. No, oh, sorry, sorry, within the frame. Within the self virtual machine, okay, I'm getting tired. Anyway, what I want to tell you is when you have problems, when your commands are not working, um, but you really character by character typed it in like the handbook says, just try it in the shell, in the evaluator of the shell, and maybe it's working then. Full stop. That being said, this video is finished. If you have any comments, questions, leave them in the comments. Make sure, as always, to read the video description. I hope you have fun with self. I hope you now understand how to like do the basic movement, how to add new slots, how to add new variables, how to add new functions and can maybe work on some stuff. If not, please let me know because I really try to spread this stuff and then if, if not, I'll just try to make another video to make it more clear what's actually happening. That being said, thank you very much for watching.